What's up YouTube? Today's keyword, marketing. So if you're not familiar with who I am, I'm No Name Producer, I'm a rap music producer, I'm also a social media marketing entrepreneur. I run my social media marketing business for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, so today we're gonna be specifically talking about marketing because that's what I do for them, that's what I kind of specialize in. And um, specifically digital marketing, social media marketing, it's honestly the future. If you're not on social media, I mean, you're watching me on social media right now. YouTube is a social media channel. But if you're not on like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, I don't know what you're waiting for. Honestly, it's probably one of the most beneficial ways. It's free first and foremost, but it's also one of the most beneficial ways to reach your target audience. I mean, this is where the eyeballs are. This is where everyone is spending their time. This is where people are sending messages back and forth. These, are, This is where other brands are marketing their products on social media. It's a really powerful platform. And if you're selling consumer products, if you're trying to get the attention of especially you know individuals between the ages of 18 and 24 then you need to be on social media regardless of if you think it's a fad like some people think you know it's not a fad it's not going anywhere anytime soon at least maybe in the long term it's probably going to get you know there's going to be some new form of technology or some new platform to take it out you know and, and, and arise from the ashes but for now it's probably one of the most important ways to market your product to your consumer right so we have different part, we have different channels for marketing when it comes to social media. And that's really specifically going to be the purpose of this talk today is how to market your content on these different platforms because just because you have a social media platform doesn't mean that you want to approach every platform the same. You know, you'll approach YouTube differently than you'll approach Twitter. You'll approach Twitter differently than you'll approach um, Facebook or Instagram. So all these different platforms have some sort of context in which you should be, you know, giving your message around that context for the most part. So if you look at YouTube, YouTube is primarily video, right? So it's long form video marketing. So this is where people come and they spend hours and hours and hours researching topics, learning new things, watching videos, watching podcasts. You know, for the most part, you can pretty much sum up YouTube as a place where people spend long periods of time absorbing information, right? Now, if you break that down to Twitter, it's kind of like almost the complete opposite. Twitter is primarily text-based. Now, Twitter does have video, it does have the opportunity to go live on Twitter, but it's still primarily a text-based platform. And specifically, a 127, I think, character um, text-based platform. So, it's really designed for short messages, so quick thoughts, whether you're, you know, on, on the way to, to work or on the way to a meeting. We just finished up a meeting, uh, you know, you had a quick thought, you just read something and you put it out there in the Twitter universe and you see whatever, you know, what people respond and how people react to it, right? So that's completely different from YouTube. So the way you deliver your message on YouTube should be completely different from the way you deliver your message on Twitter. You shouldn't really do the whole thing where I see some people linking social media platforms and when they post to one platform, it automatically goes to the other platform. That's not really a strategic way of doing social media marketing. And if you are doing it that way currently, I would kind of highly suggest that you, you know, take a different approach and start looking at every single platform as its own individual thing and understanding how to cater your message based on the context of that platform, right? So let's specifically, since we started talking about YouTube, like I said, YouTube is a long form marketing. So it's really where you would have, um, where you would target a certain type of consumer, more so a practical consumer, a pragmatic consumer, a consumer who's gonna have a lot of questions, who's gonna have a, have a lot of concerns before doing business with you. YouTube is typically the best place to do that, again, because it has it's video based and it's a long form. It allows you to upload hours and hours of content so you can really get into depth with whatever it is that you're selling, whatever it is, whatever product or service that you have to offer, you know, the features and benefits, how it will benefit people, you can also get into social proof, show other people using your products. So it's really a place for the practical consumer, the pragmatic consumer, the consumer who has a lot of questions, who wants to see you. It's also a great way for you to build a relationship because through video is the best way to build a relationship with your digital online audience. So it's a really powerful platform. YouTube is definitely somewhere that's, you know, something that's going to be around for the long term. And, you know, if you just look at the stats, I mean, millions and millions, if not billions of, of minutes of, of, of videos uploaded on YouTube like every hour so it's a powerful platform a lot of people are using it to communicate and um, I highly suggest like if you again if you're not on these platforms they're all free I don't know what you're waiting for get on it start uploading content start getting familiar with the process and you know take advantage of it it's out there you who knows you know YouTube may start charging for this in the future you just never know but um 
let's hop on to Twitter, right? So that's the context of YouTube. Again, long term, long form marketing, long marketing, practical consumer, pragmatic consumer, um, you know, longer messages, more detail, more information. Um, this is this is what you should be thinking about when you, when you approach YouTube, right? So Twitter is kind of like the opposite. So short, quick, to the point, snappy. Uh, controversial a little bit I think that's a, a lot of the you know a lot of um, videos that I see on Twitter marketing they forget that that part Twitter is a controversial platform right it's kind of like a wild, the wild wild west it's kind of like a wild party you know you're not really gonna find the most sophisticated users on Twitter to be completely honest it's gonna be a lot of younger um, individuals who use Twitter a lot of people who are into politics a lot of people who are just more controversial in, ge in general a lot of memes start out on Twitter a lot of people don't even really realize that but a lot of the funny memes that you see on Instagram or Facebook start out on Twitter so it kind of gives you the the basis for what type of platform Twitter is it's, it's, it's just a little wild you know so if you're gonna be on Twitter make sure you know you to present yourself in that context you know you want to be a little more controversial you want to be more social because Twitter's not really the platform where you just upload stuff and you just tweet and you tweet and you tweet. You really have to engage on Twitter and, you know, comment on other people's posts. Just join. Think of it as just joining the conversation. So whatever, you know, you go to the, the most talked about uh, things in the Twitter page, whatever's the most trending topics. I, I think that's how they, they label it, the trending topics on Twitter. So you go to the trending topics and you just join the conversations, whatever you know most about. If, if you see, uh, you know, a specific rap album is trending and you just heard it, join that conversation. Go and engage, comment on other people's, uh, you know, tweets. Have your own tweets. Make sure to use hashtags. Hashtags are extremely important on Twitter. I think it's probably the number one platform where it matters the most. So, um, again, Twitter is a little bit more, it, it's short, it's controversial, it's more for, you know, like engaging with people really quickly and short, with short bits of information. You've got to be interesting on Twitter. You can't really just, you know, Twitter is not really the place where you go and you say, oh, okay, like these are the people using my products. You just jump in. You just jump. It, it's really less about you and more about how you engage with others and how interesting you are on Twitter, right? So that's how you should be thinking about Twitter. Controversy, interesting, you know, contagious idea, things that can potentially go viral, uh, communicating with others, engaging other posts. It's not like uh, YouTube. It's completely different. So again, you want to have your overall, your overarching brand but you want to have it be adaptable to these different platforms right now let's look at instagram instagram is a little different instagram is um kind of like highlights that's the way that's kind of like the way i like to see it right it's kind of like the highlights of what you're doing right so you would use instagram to show your hot show your highlights show your business in its best form right so you want to basically use um, the interesting thing about Instagram is that it also allows you to, you know, do live Instagram live is really popular. Instagram stories are really popular. Now they have, they actually have a feature called Instagram highlights, but, um, for the most part, you really want to approach Instagram from a point of just presenting your business in the best way possible, right? So Instagram is where a lot of people will go. If you tell them about your business, they'll go check your Instagram. It's kind of like a trust factor. If someone wants to do business with you, they check your Instagram, see your engagement, see your followers. Instagram is really popular right now, so it's a really important platform that I really think you should nail in your business, uh, in your marketing campaign, in your ma marketing strategy. It's really an important business. Um, it's really an, an important platform that uh would be able to get you, you know, a lot of customers because again, it's, it's more of a trust factor when it comes to Instagram, right? So understanding that it's more about highlights. So you, like I said, you want to show yourself ach uh, achieving things, getting a re awards, rewards, achieving milestones, you know, networking. So you kind of want to show your business in action on Instagram. I think that's the best way to approach it is to show your business in action. Right, so if you're a music producer like your, like myself, you would show yourself in the studio making beats, talking with artists, meeting with rappers, uh, you know, go, going through some videos about maybe how I how I started this beat. It probably wouldn't be a full in depth video that would be for YouTube, obviously, as we can see with the different contexts. But um, you might want to just you know show people a little snippet about how you did something. So Instagram again is like a highlight platform. You highlight the best in your business, right? So. Then we go over to Facebook. Facebook is an interesting one because Facebook, to me, I'm not really a huge fan of Facebook, but it's kind of like a hybrid of all of those things. It's a hybrid of YouTube. It's a hybrid of Instagram, primarily those two other social media platforms. It allows you to do Facebook Live. A lot of people, you know, use Facebook Live. Facebook also has Facebook messaging, which is a new way of, you know, which a lot of entrepreneurs and that I'm seeing a lot of people are marketing their business through Facebook messaging because you know, it's not really that oversaturated. People do open their Facebook messages uh, as opposed to direct messages, right? So Facebook, like I said, is, is, is a bit of a hybrid. 
Um, the only thing with Facebook is that it doesn't really have that much of an engaging younger audience. So a lot of the people who are really engaging on Facebook are a little bit older, um, typically older than 25, 26 years old. So, um, you know, you want to keep that in mind with whatever product or service that you're selling or offering on the internet um, is to keep in mind that if it's really targeted towards a young crowd, Facebook probably might not be the best place to spend most of your dollars at. But the Facebook advertising platform is really powerful because Facebook breaks every user down to specific interests, what they're interested in, the things that they do, their demographics, psychographics. So it has a lot of data there. There's a lot of data on Facebook that still can be useful. And I think honestly, you know, depending on how you're, you're, you're developing your marketing strategy, you may want to use Facebook in the beginning. It's cheap. It's easy. There's a lot of data and you can get your numbers up really quickly on Facebook. So it's good for a short term strategy, but overall, I think, um, again, if you're targeting consumers with a much younger audience, you really wouldn't want to spend too much time and energy on Facebook, but it's still a great platform and it still will allow you to build your business, grow your marketing, uh, <clears throat> grow your marketing funnel and extend and reach your target audience because of all the data that's available. Right? So really quickly, we'll talk about Snapchat. Snapchat, I think is really interesting. Snapchat, uh, you know, is kind of having like an up and down past few months with the whole situation situation with Rihanna, whole situation with Kylie Jenner. Um, it's taken a few hits. I don't know if that's put it out of the game or not. A lot of people are counting Snapchat out, but um, I'm still kind of have my eyes on it because I think it can still bounce back. But um, it's not really looking that good for Snapchat. But I think let's just let's just talk about it anyway. Snapchat is to me, in my opinion, kind of like a a daily TV show. So it's like keeping up with the Kardashians for your personal brand, right? So it's kind of like you go through, you show snippets of your day, you know, and that's kind of how I just see it. it's kind of like a TV show. It's 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 just bit by bit, small pieces of information of what your day, where you're at, what you're doing, what you're working on, and it, and it can be useful. And again, Snapchat is kind of like the opposite of Facebook when it co when it comes to age group demographics. You know, it, it's typically a, a much much younger um, age group on Snapchat. And you might want to keep that in mind because some of these people probably don't have credit cards and can't buy anything. But um, again, it's still great for getting your brand out there, getting your brand message out, because eventually these younger this, these younger audience will enter the marketplace. They're next up for enter, entering the marketplace. So if you can target them and, you know, give them the resources needed, even if it's something free, you know, to become loyal to your brand, I think it's a really important strategy for the long term, but it's definitely not going to get you that many results in the short term, right? So those are kind of like the biggest social media platforms that I that I you know that I work with with my clients that I work with myself and I you know like I said they're all free they're all out there they're all opportunities you know I think you should really whether you're an artist a producer a songwriter a music engineer it's really important to understand that social media is where people are you know you've got to go to where the eyeballs are you know at the end of the day we have radio we have TV we have you know general these these types of traditional forms of advertising but and there's nothing wrong with those forms of advertising, but they're very expensive um, and they just kind of like splatter out, right? So they're not really that targeted. So if you really want to target, you, you really should be using the data um, that's available on these social media platforms because they have a lot of data on people. And that's one thing, you know, whether good or bad, you know, a lot of people, it's a huge debate. Um, uh, you know, the internet of things, big data, you know, you hear all these different talks. But particularly big data is more where this specific talk applies to. Um, you know, it, all these platforms collect data on you. They see where you click. They see what you like. They, they you know, they, they notice these patterns, you know, however you shop, what type of clothes you buy. And um, it's really useful for marketers. It's really useful for people who are entrepreneurs. It's really useful for you as an artist, as a producer, so that you can specifically target your message in front of people who really actually want what you have to offer, right? With traditional forms of media, it's just kind of like general people who are, a lot of people who don't have any interest in what you offer are going to hear your message. And that can be a waste of money. So um, use these platforms as not just a way to kind of get people familiar with who you are, but also as an advertising platform. And um, again, remember the context, these are all different. So don't approach um, YouTube like how you would approach Snapchat. Don't ap approach Twitter how you would approach Instagram. Don't share your messages across platforms. Make everything unique. Yes, there are some things that probably can be shared at different points, but you don't want to get into the habit of just, you know, you post something and it goes directly to another platform. It's, it's really not a good strategy. And, um, you know, a lot of the businesses that I work with, we some of them use that strategy before I started working with them. And that's something that we automatically, after a few months of them seeing the benefits of, of catering your content, 
to each specific platform and the context of each platform, the benefits that that brings you, it's really important that, uh, you know, you understand that as well and you understand the benefits of it. So again, social media marketing is the future. It's digital marketing in general, just understanding the internet, the, all the data is coming from the internet, right? So if you don't understand anything else from this one talk, understand this, that data comes from the internet. People leave trails and trails and trails and trails of data on the internet when they when they use their browser when they search google and a lot of this data is actually being used and sold to be honest and purchased by bigger companies who is using this as market research right so there's a lot of market research companies who literally make money off the data that people upload online it's kind of insane when you think about it but you know it is what it is that's the current state of the you know world we live in but um you know why not while it's out use it to your advantage now i'm not saying obviously Obviously, you want to have ethics when you're when you're using this this sort of sensitive information. But like I said, as long as you're 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 tailoring your message and you're catering to people and you're actually bringing them value and giving them things that they need, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And and it, and it's available. You know, people obviously understand this. Not everyone realizes that when they you know check the I agree checkbox before they use a platform or when they're signing up for Instagram or Facebook, they don't realize that their data is going to be widely available. But, um, you know, it's something that uh, obviously I'm pretty sure most people understand to a degree that that's what's happening. You know, that's what's going on with their information, their information. They're volunteering their information to be used by, you know, the public. So use this information to your advantage. It, it's out there. Build your business. Get on these social media platforms. Don't procrastinate. It's not going anywhere. It's not a fad. And um, like I said, I hope you guys got something from this uh, talk. Make sure to subscribe, like, drop a comment, and follow me at No Name Producer. If you guys aren't, aren't following me at No Name Producer on Instagram already, um, a lot of times I do live talks, right? So live talks will be something like this topic, but I'll go back and forth and I'll actually answer questions with people who are on the live call. So it's really important that you guys also follow me on on, on Instagram. That's really the huge benefit is that um, it's, it, it becomes a two-way form of communication where... I would answer your specific questions about your business, about what you're doing, about how you're marketing and promoting your product or service, right? So again, make sure to like and subscribe below. Follow me on Instagram at No Name Producer, and um, I'll see you over there.